Hi, we're here to walk through the creation of the drawing sheet, the multi-view drawing for the axle peg. But before I do that, I want to make sure you saw how to add at least um, kind of documented on shape that this part, the axle peg, had a threaded um, outside. It's not something you're going to see other than just some lines, but um, you may not have that done. So I'm going to hide the wheel and hide the train body so that we can see this. All right, in your ribbon next to the hole tool is an external thread tool. If I turn that on, it'll let you specify um, kind of the standard that you're using and the size and the threads per inch, et cetera, um, the length. And so all this is kind of remembering that I had already done it and remembering my previous values, but we wanted from, um, from this here, we knew that we had a one quarter 20 UNC by one inch with a quarter inch offset. So instead of a full one inch of threads, a quarter inch offset means that the threads are stopping a quarter inch off of the end. So they really net out to be three quarters of an inch. Okay. So that's where I've got this length and um, they actually have the ability to add a chamfer. We had already um, had a chamfer, but you could play around with deleting your chamfer and trying to chamfer within here. So but I'm going to just choose um, this edge here with those values. And it's now stored in the part file that that was a threaded piece. So it doesn't actually cut threads in like you might want to see, um, like if you're wanting to 3D print the threads. But in our purposes, it's really just there to kind of document and say that. So now when we go over to the drawing sheet, all right, the drawing sheet that we are trying to create. Let me see, looks like this. So we have a, um, a view of the head where you can see the hex hole. And then we have a half section view. So we've used this view to kind of cut right through the middle, make that zigzag. We've turned on um, hin lines maybe. We'll see that's the threads kind of showing up. So let's see if we need to do anything to make that visible. And then we will add our dimensions. So let's add a new sheet. Let's go ahead and rename it right away, axle peg. And then let's bring on that first view. Now remember the view name that you're gonna choose is the one um, that the view cube shows right here when you kind of turn the part studio and look at it. So if I want to see this, that's gonna be the right. So let's go ahead and insert from the current doc, from the part studio, part six. I guess I haven't named it. I need to name it the axle peg. And I know already to go ahead and choose the right. Now the scale of this is pretty small. It's a small part, so I'm gonna scale it up. And let me try to, I don't really remember what scale I had done before. Let's try four to one. That'll probably be more like it. Okay, so I'm gonna choose that. On shape is gonna auto turn on project. One, two, three. I'm going to go ahead and project diagonally up and right to get the isometric. Oh, okay, and the threads are already showing up. I'm going to turn off the project tool. I'm going to right click and say show, show shaded to shade the isometric. And then we will do our section view over here. So we're turning on the section view tool right here. Uh, I'm going to start with a vertical line. I'm going to click at the center. If it doesn't locate the center for you, just hover over the outside and then come back to it. I'm going to make my first click. I'm going to zoom in pretty good so that I can continue to see that midpoint or the center point as well as the outside. And now my next click is going to be one where I just try to do my best to get that section line, that cut line to align to the center while I'm at the edge. If I think I've got it, I'm going to click. I'm going to go ahead and zoom out. I'm panning a little bit and then I'm going to place this over here. And the section view is automatically turned off. I'm going to bring that just a little bit higher and bring these views a little bit higher. Just give myself a little more room for my dimensions. Remember that the section name um, is movable. So if it doesn't end up being where you want it, you can move it around. Also, don't be alarmed at all if you create this and it doesn't say section D dash D. If it's C or B or A, um, that doesn't matter. So 
when you're in a drawing set, as you create section views, Onshape is going to just use the next letter in the alphabet each time you create another section view. Okay, especially when you have um, a section view that's placed um, on a sheet where there's multiple section views, or maybe the section view is on another page from where the section view was created. We want to be able to attach this view to the origin of the view. Okay, a section view is created by slicing through a different view. So we're going to show the orientation of how we cut through somewhere else. So anyway, that's all that's doing is helping you kind of go find the correct cut line. All right. So this is a very um, good view to understand the object. And we're going to turn on our dimension tool and dimension kind of as much as we can. So how about we start with the overall length? Um, I'm going to do the length of the cylindrical part, the kind of the threaded part, minus the offset. Um, understanding the geometry of this head, let me get this little flat section. Now that number is not going to squeeze in there very nicely, so I'm going to have to pop that number outside. Um, and I don't like that it's going to get close to that either, so I think I'm going to bring it right there. Okay, um, part of why I did this section view is that I wanted to note um, the depth of this hole, this interior feature. So I'm gonna go ahead and let's see. I, I need that extension line to create a break though. So I'm gonna choose like this segment or that point and then I'll choose that corner. Just all that is is managing my extension line gaps. So that shows the depth of that hexagon hole. We need to show and dimension the hexagon from the um, view where we can see the hexagon though, but this view we can see how deep it cuts in. And then this right here is an arc, so I need to give the radius to that arc. And it looks like whether I do it down here or up here, I'm kind of stuck having to probably get a leader line to go across um, this extension line. So that's okay, it's not the worst thing in the world. We prefer not to intersect lines, but um, you could kind of pull that out too, like that. I guess that's just, probably user preference, what you think is neater or messier, but you could do this as well. I'm gonna go and put it right there. And on the end, I'm gonna add a couple more dimensions, but these are gonna be using different tools. So where your standard dimension tool is, that's a drop down, and there is one for chamfers. We added a little chamfer to the end. So if I click the chamfered edge, and then click either the end or this piece, either one, especially because this is just a 45, 45 kind of angle cut, um, that will make a chamfer note. So it gives me the distance of the chamfer kind of from where the corner was back, you know, along either face and at what angle is cut. So that's one note. The other thing is we want to use um, the hole slash thread call out tool. So this tool right here, it was, we've used it for holes, but it's also used for threads. So we're going to hold that or turn that tool on. And then if we grab, I think you just grab the end, even though you see that dash line, it should recognize that we have a threaded, um, how about we go this way, a threaded piece and that documents those threads. Okay. Um, the distance of those threads, we can dimension right here because, or I could type it in here, um, use a note. You know, if we did it pretty similar to the document, it could be this. So I'm just typing that it's UNC times one, one inch and a quarter inch offset. So you do have the ability to do that. That might be a little better than the 0.75. All right, now that is hanging over the border, which I'm kind of happy to model that sometimes you're just dimensioning and 
things just naturally kind of fit there. Well, you need to try to move things. And if it gets really crowded to move it um, comfortably where your leader line is, then you may have to move your entire view. So let's go ahead and zoom out a little bit. And let's just think about bringing this view to the left a little more. Then we can bring this view to the left a little bit and just buy ourselves some space. But continue to think about zooming out and looking at the overall picture and making sure it looks neat and organized. Now these right here probably don't need to be so far up. Okay. There you go. All right. I've mentioned almost everything. Um, from the top here, though, I need to um, dimension the diameters of these circles. I have not sized these two circles, and I haven't sized this hexagon. And I think that's it. Um, the hexagon, we might want to note that it's um, all equal sides, so we could add a note that it's a regular hexagon as well. So let's go ahead and just use the dimension tool. We're just going to click on a circle. On shape will automatically know to give a diameter because it's a circle. Um, the hexagon across the flats was 0.156. Now I'm going to move that 0.25 liter line so it's not cut across there. And then, so let's maybe do that first. Let's move this one a little bit. Then we'll move this one a little bit. Okay. And then I'm going to turn on the regular old annotation tool. I'm going to click on the hexagon, pull it away, and we're going to add a note. That is a regular hexagon. Um, by saying it's a regular hexagon, that should tell everybody that all sides are equal, so I don't have to try to dimension too much. I'm going to put a carriage return in there, just so it takes up a little less horizontal space. All right, so I think that's it. I think that's complete. There is your axle peg multi-view drawing.